Welcome to episode 74 of the Rex Chapman Show with my super dope homeboy from the Lex Town, Josh Hopkins. What is up, Josh? Still here in Lexington, Rex. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, was going to leave to go back, um, but uh, the ice storms everywhere. Two yeah. days, haven't been able to get out. Yeah. And uh, surprisingly, the reason I can't get back into Austin is because Austin is iced over. <laughs> <laughs> who would have uh, thunk it? Who would have thunk, thunk it? Ice storm in uh, Texas, in Austin, and we still haven't had our first snow of the year here in New York. Uh, really? Yeah. I mean, we may have had mm. one, like, no, really, Dustin, really haven't had a good yeah. one. Yeah. We've had, some, it, we've had some in Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. Um, episode 74, Josh. Know any 74s? Yeah, yeah. Famous 74s? Those are tough yeah those are tough uh our crack producer jeremiah came up with one or was it alex merlin olsen 74 oh yeah actor actor Actor. Actor. football player uh, football and then uh they said uh michael Orr, the guy from from the blind blind side yeah yeah 74 couple 74s couple 74s um Mm -hmm. what else is going on in the world right now buddy um, I, I see, I see you got your mom's, uh, you're at your mom's and I, I see you've got, yeah, a nice, I, am. I see you got a nice dresser there behind you. I want to yeah, know what's, mom, what, this mom what, motif, right? This is, yeah, I don't know it's where beautiful. to do this here, but, uh, what, what are in those drawers? I wonder. <laughs> uh, this, this could be interesting. Let's, let's try let's it. Take a look here. Yeah. <laughs> See what's in uh, Carolyn's upstairs. Uh, this drawer here seems to be uh-huh. a lot of probably <laughs> braces, knee brace, ankle brace. Oh, nice. Those have to be yeah. yours. Yeah, Those are yours, are. right? No, nah, my mom likes to get out and for a pickup game every once in a while. <laughs> she gets in some run down at the yeah. park. But you know how old that is because I don't wear braces anymore. Yeah, for, yeah. I don't play anything. No, uh uh-uh. uh what, over here. what else you got oh. there, buddy? Anything else interesting in mom's drawers upstairs? A bow tie. A I bow think tie. I might have wore this to a dance in high school. <laughs> Probably had red cummerbund too. <laughs> what is? Uh, what are those? Oh, I know. I can tell. What, what is that? <laughs> Something in a Ziploc These bag. These are a few of the. I always gave my seat back chairs to my mom and dad. Oh my God, that's Here's, cool. Let me see. Uh, yeah. I'll see. Come on. Uh, yeah. Josh Hopkins. Uh, and this is, from, this is from G.I. Jane. This was the production company. Crap 2 0 from G.I. Mm-hmm. Jane. Yeah. I see Woo. you. I see you, his op. Let's see. Look this at this. Is. The director's oh. chairs. Look at Josh this Hopkins. One. Ready? Yeah. 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 You'll, you'll know this when the kids won't, but ready? Let's see. Yep. Allie McBeal, let's yeah. go. Look oh, at you. Okay. Look at let's you, Josh. Look I love this me, game. Rex. I this love is... this game. I'm glad we did this. Oh, this is uh, uh-huh. this what do we is have? disappointing. This is disappointing. What, what was that? Josh I'm Hopkins, shocking. NYPD 2069. <laughs> yeah, it was this pilot. I don't remember that one. No one does. It was a, it was a pilot uh, <laughs> that I was a star of, and we made the pilot. And it's like I got, you know, in an accident and they unfroze me in 2069 and it was as bad as it, that pitch sounds. So <laughs> no one ever saw that. Oh, here's one. Oh, what do we got here? A new one? Yeah. I don't Josh know Hopkins. Saw, oh, saw this green. show, but this uh-huh. this was on for a year on What's CBS. What is this one? Swing town, swing yeah. town. Let's go. Look Played swingers you. on CBS, so you know that wasn't gonna okay. last long. All right, all right. You more of them? Uh, yeah. Let's go. A, yeah. Here you go. Turn I love this one. game. Uh, this Josh was Hopkins. another fa- another fail when I pilot. grow up. Yeah, another fail pilot. We did seven <sighs> episodes and they never aired. What do we oh, got here? This is getting sucks. more and more depressing. Oh, here you go. Uh-huh. <laughs> Josh Hopkins uh, on the set Pepper of Dennis. Pepper, Pepper Dennis. Okay. Yeah, the show I did I remember uh, Pepper Dennis a little. with me and Rebecca Romaine, and it was only on for one season. Yeah, I remember that uh, one vaguely. Oh, okay. Here what do we have is, here. Uh, Josh Hopkins, a, Surrender Dorothy. 
Yeah, that, that's not a lot of people. So uh, uh, that's a <laughs> Diane Keaton, Diane Diane Keaton movie though. I was, oh, that was pretty cool. I love Ooh, it. Here, here's a good one. Ooh, a good one. I already right. saw it. Josh Hopkins, yes, and the perfect storm. Yeah, I love I think it. That's about all I have here. This is a failed, another failed pilot. Another failed pilot. And we yeah, got global, global frequency. frequency. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. that was a nice yeah. trip down memory lane, buddy. Thank eh, you. Some of them, some of them, I just reminds me that I could have been really successful if they had gone <laughs> to series. And here oh, I am. Thanks for doing that, buddy. Um, that was interesting. That was interesting. Um, we have a great guest today, Josh. We have yeah, a terrific, that? we have a terrific guest today while you're cleaning up your mom's uh, upstairs bedroom. Yes. Yes. I don't want Keep you going. to get a spanking. Oh, oh. Um, oh, what do you got? Something else? What do you have there? T-shirt? What is Ready? that? What kind of... T- oh, oh, that's a pretty jump shot. Yeah, Look is. at How the old that? Rex Chapman T-shirt. Are you shitting me? You got that upstairs. Fan from way back, you Mr. Man. <laughs> Mr. Man. <laughs> did you read anything this week? I didn't. Did you? No, that's been book club. Who do we got? We have a guy who's in very, very high demand this time of year. He has uh, he came up through the ranks as a journalist, went to Michigan. We've seen him covering ESPN and the NFL for the last, I don't know, 30 years or so. Yeah. yeah. Um, we called him up a few days ago and asked him if he'd come on this show for just a few seconds before he gets really busy this weekend and next weekend host of the rich eisen show nfl network analyst four-time emmy nominee richard seth eisen welcome buddy (laughs) what's up man i didn't know your introductions were reading someone's birth certificate i had no idea it is that's what we do very good what we do here how are you man i'm good good to see you guys you too uh you wake up you wake up today yeah. And, uh, you know, you're a content guy. You put something new out every day. You study, you're, you study, you study. And maybe the greatest NFL player of all time announces he's yeah. retiring. How do you adjust what goes through your mind? That's yeah, it was one of those where, you know, uh, I wake up, you know, 20 minutes before the alarm goes off. You look at your phone and you're like, oh, shit, I've, I, I'm, I'm now, now I'm up, you know. And so um, and then you look at your, emails and and that's <laughs> before you, you do that you're like what am i going to talk about today it's the wednesday before super bowl week i mean <clears throat> normally the middle of a, an nfl week is a, a a page turner where you've turned the page from the last to the next weekend and this weekend's the pro bowl games complete with flag football and you're like what are we going to talk about and then you're like <laughs> tom brady's retiring okay there there we go we're we're, we're good that's when you start going down your guest list and saying, do I have to cancel anybody because it doesn't yeah. fit the equation, you know? Um, but to be honest with you, we, we, and that's what he referred to in his, in his, in his retirement video uh, that he shot in the dunes of some South beach community. It looked mm-hmm. like, and, and all a couple of things I was thinking of is one, like, why did he choose that spot? Uh, and then, you know, yeah. it's pointed out to me that the end of his new movie, he's shooting a video uh, on the beach somewhere similar to that setup. And I'm wondering, is he doing this to help promote his new movie in a way? <laughs> um, and then secondly, uh, I'm like, could you imagine you're like some 80 year old retiree just moved down there and you got your metal detector and you're looking for like a lost, you know, watch or whatever. And there's Tom Brady re- recording his farewell video. Like, oh, hey, Tom, what's up? You know, um, but in all honesty, it's just talking about the same thing I talked about the last time he did it, which is the greatest to ever do it. And we just literally it's funny. We I I, I asked um, members of, of my show uh, production team, you know, uh, do you have the graphic that we used last year? <laughs> and the graphic is his numbers is a 20 year old, a 30 year old and a 40 year old, and they're all hall of fame worthy. Um, and, and they're like, yeah, we have it. We'll just update the, the 40 year old stats. I'm like, great. Amazing. We went on the air and it was pretty much a, a similar to last year where he's still the greatest. 
and he he still has the numbers that are are eye popping. He had a dry run last year. Yeah, yeah it was uh, amazing. Uh, Josh yeah. thought Josh thought maybe he woke up this morning, went to see the movie, and went. No, fuck this. I'm out of here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's an actor now. <laughs> That's he's right. Like, I got you know, this. Once you once you get a taste of working with Rita Moreno, you can't go back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> right, Josh? You ever oh, work with any of them? Oh, you ever work with any of the stars of 80 for Brady? I, I, I haven't seen it yet. I just. Oh, uh, no, it doesn't yeah. matter. But like, was Sally Field uh, who's in, in the town? Was Sa- so I, mean, I worked with Sally Field before. Yes, I have. OK. On a. Uh, 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 some show. I worked with her. <laughs> yes, Wait, brothers man. and sisters. Dude. Brothers and sisters. Okay, you should have right. said the flying nun just yeah. to see who caught it. <laughs> you know, just to see yeah. who caught it. Yeah, the working on the flying nun. It. Oh, okay, great. Working in the bandit two. I was the <laughs> gas attendant. Right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I don't know who else is on it, but yeah, I didn't know I did. Rich, Rich, what's the most incredible thing about uh, Tom Brady's career? The seven titles, the longevity, uh, the or the sustained sustained success, uh, or the fact that he's a Michigan man? Yeah, uh-huh. well, you can't you can't just choose one, Rex. I mean, the two things that I talked about today on my show uh, is you, it's the stat as a forty year old that mm. th- his numbers since turning forty. Because it speaks to his longevity and it speaks to his greatness and it speaks to his, um, you know, desire to compete that is on the level of Jordan and on the level of Kobe and LeBron and Tiger and Serena. Uh, Name anybody at that level of the pantheon in sports. He does that. That's him. Um, So the fact that he would eat and live and uh and and become somebody who just lived and ate the competition and made sure his body would be prepared for it and succeed for as long as he did. Like his his career after turning 40 is a Hall of Fame career in itself, 194 co- career touchdowns. He he had almost 30,000 yards passing as a 40-year-old. He he his last game as a professional, the the Monday night loss in the wild card round at Dallas, he threw 66 passes. Now we may see somebody do that again in a playoff game. It's not a record. Big Ben actually set the record in 2020, but he, <clears throat> when he was down so much against the Cleveland Browns, he had to keep throwing it, but we'll never see somebody throw as many passes uh, in a game like that when it's 21 more attempts than years he was on the planet. You know, he's a 45 year old thrown for 66 attempts in a game and his numbers as a 40 year old are absurd. And then you want to talk about his longevity. The aspect that I talked about his career as well is that his first Super Bowl of his 10 (laughs) and his first win of his seven Super Bowls came when he uh, was, in, as you know, uh, a first-year starter for the Patriots by uh, necessity due to injury of, of, to Drew Bledsoe, and how that Super Bowl he was in was the 9-11 Super Bowl. Wow. And that feels like such a lifetime ago for so many of us, and that there are so many, there's an entire generation now of people who, you know, draft Tom Brady in fantasy leagues and root for him or root against him and have seen him play at the peak level because he played till he was 45, who don't understand the significance of what I'm referring to. Yeah. You know, that his career, he played, he won the 9-11 Super Bowl in New Orleans (laughs) when the whole country had their hearts in their throats about whether this game you know, would be uninterrupted despite it being months after 9-11. It was the biggest target America's ever put on on stage. Um, And I remember it was like a fort. I've never seen before or since, to be honest with you, a security perimeter like the one that was around the Superdome that day. Wow. And Paul McCartney performed before the game and U2 performed halftime of the game. And it was a team called the Patriots coming um, (laughs) in the way of the greatest show on turf and 
a huge underdog story that Tom Brady completed, even to his own amazement, the famous photograph of his hands on his head as he's looking at, I think, his family in the in the crowd. Like he couldn't believe what had happened. That was his first man, you know, and so he's been there and he's done that. And there's there's really no other way to term it other than unprecedented. I don't I'll ever be touched. Do you think you know? speaking of him being 40, do you think how how important or satisfying was it? to Tom to win one without Belichick. Uh, I think, you know, it meant a lot to him. And that's not in any way, shape, or form, I think, a slide against Bill. It's just that when if if you feel that um, you've been identified by a certain way in your profession and you're very proud of being identified that way, you want to, um, if, you know, uh, forced to part ways or desired to part ways, you want to be viewed as good as you were in your previous spot or, or even better. And, you know, um, so I think it means a lot to him that he did do that. Uh, and, and in his first year also, I mean, when he did it, it's just like, can you imagine if he wins the Super Bowl in Tampa Bay? And the answer is how about this year? You know, it, it's crazy. It's really it nuts is. what he did. It so, really is. Do you, do you, now he's the best football player ever to play with everyone. Well, I mean, when I first started with NFL Network, we're 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 gonna we're in November, Josh. We're gonna celebrate year twenty, and so Congrats. for the first wow. when we came on the air, and then for the first one would say twelve to fifteen years of our network, the conversation about who's the greatest, and certainly uh, when we had our you know top lists and list shows to help fill the time on NFL network and milestone years for the, for the NFL. And we, we, we did just the NFL 100 show um, a couple of years ago when the NFL celebrated their 100th year, the, the conversation of who's the greatest of all time, the goat of the NFL was an argument between Jerry Rice and Jim Brown. Mm-hmm. And now mm-hmm. there's a third man in uh, there's a third man into this conversation um, you know, you might have an opinion based on your generation, but in terms of um, winning, in terms of decorated resumes, in terms of longevity, in terms of so many different metrics, Brady is number one. And his name will be synonymous with winning for the NFL when my children have children and they have mm-hmm. children. And and I'm just thrilled that my children got to see him play and they got to see him play at a great level. I mean, how many times do you see great players in any sport kind of limp their way through to the finish? And Tom didn't win in his last two years. It, he didn't win it all, but he mm-hmm. won. Yeah. And he was um he 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 wasn't a shadow of himself physically. He said he wanted to play till he's 45 and he made it. He did it. He sure did. Uh, you know, Josh and I are cont- proud Kentuckians, and yep. uh we have strong opinions about our Wildcats and and the players. Uh Go back in time for us, if you can. Where where did you stand uh, on Tom Brady, his years at Michigan? You're a Michigan yeah. man. Wh- well, where did you stand on that guy? Well, Brady, in terms of his appear his time at Michigan, it was just after Michigan won the national championship, and in my opinion, they were the best team that year. Even though they split the title with Nebraska, um, Tom Osborne was retiring, and I think there was a you know, and I know I'm 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 being heretical when it comes to uh, Cornhusker fans when they feel that they did des- they deserve to win. And had Michigan played Nebraska that year in '97, it would have been a titanic clash that they think they should have won. Right. But I feel like Tom Osborne was retiring. This is a hell of a gold watch to give him half of Michigan's chat title. <laughs> you know, um, uh, but be that as it may, that 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 conversation and argument in my mind between Nebraska and Michigan uh, gave birth to the whole idea of, well, we need a BCS. We need to have one versus two set up somehow, uh, which led to the current day of what, uh, of college football with a playoff that's now going to be expanded, but not to go too deep into it. That's the way Michigan Brady was born into Michigan. And, um, and he was there as a kid who wasn't highly recruited um but he was a standout and for the first time in his 
of many times was overlooked and doubted as to whether he could, with his skill set, right. um, be a, a championship quarterback. And as he was beginning to prove those, um, as he was beginning to prove his worth and those bona fides, um, Michigan got, and they had to essentially got the Mr. Football mm-hmm. of Michigan. Drew Henson was his name. So name whatever, including yourself, Rex, you can throw yourself <laughs> in that, you know, the Mr. Basketball, yeah, right. of Kentucky, you know, figure out like if you also played a second sport and you were Mr. In that sport too, a two sport star right. that dominated all the headlines in your home state, you know, of course, Kentucky would have to go get you. Right. right, right. So Michigan got Drew Henson and um, they put him in. And I think unfairly to Tom, they put him in. They put him in based on the uh, popularity that he right. had within the state and with the career that he had uh, as a prep star and gave him the opportunity that I think Tom had earned, quite frankly. And one year, they actually played some games where they they started each one at different quarters. Wow. You know, I was at a game in Syracuse. My brother-in-law went to Syracuse. I went to a game in the Carrier Dome, and Drew Henson and Tom Brady played different quarters. You were the quarterback of the first quarter. You were the quarterback of the second quarter. Imagine that happening today, oh right? God. That would never happen mm-hmm. today. And that's the way that Brady finally broke through and proved he was a better quarterback than Drew Henson, this just in, and proved <laughs> to Lloyd Carr that, Whatever, you know, you were doing to try and give the kid that was popular or had a huge upside a shot, you know, the kid with that was not as athletic from Northern California, he's kind of your winner. And he (laughs) went out, Brady, and destroyed, I believe it was another Rex. I think it was Rex Grossman. I think he destroyed him and, and Florida and the Orange Bowl set a bunch of records for it, I think, before he went into the draft and got a collective shrug from the NFL and it was all. So I was kind of like, why are we, you know, of course my initial reaction was like, let's go with Drew Henson. Like this guy's supposed to be the greatest thing ever. Right. Right. And then after a while, it's like, why are we going with Drew Henson when every <laughs> single time this kid named Brady shows up that he's winning games and pulling it out at the end and has this knack in the fourth <laughs> quarter, he showed it in college and nobody That's paid crazy. attention to it. And the greatest was forged through that journey. Yeah, it changes the adage there. The uh, If you have two quarterbacks, well, in Michigan's case, you have one. Yeah, they had one. <laughs> definitely. You definitely they did, have And they one. finally found it. And, and you know, I, there, there's word that Tom still, you know, isn't – or Tom's family isn't still very happy with Michigan over it, you know. But, um, A – it, it 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 all kind of worked out in the end. And, you know, when you walk into the Michigan football locker room, you will see there's a photograph of Bo Schembechler, the great Bo Schembechler, um, on the wall. And not one, but two pictures of Tom Brady. Wow. One when he was at Michigan wearing number 10 and one as a Patriot wearing number 12. So yeah. he's he's got more pictures on the wall on the wall for the players to see <laughs> before they walk out on the field at Michigan stadium than Bo Schembechler. That's amazing. Uh, uh, Rich, what your, your, your parents are from Brooklyn. How do you end up going to Michigan? And uh, you're, you end up in Michigan at Michigan. You're writing for the school newspaper. You end up having a pretty good team uh, yeah. your junior year. How yeah. good was that Michigan basketball team? Your junior. Amazing. Uh, I went to, I went to Michigan for various reasons. One, uh, it was a hot school um, in the mid '80s when I when I was applying because the movie The Big Chill, yeah, remember that that's movie? right, that's right. Um, <laughs> that was about um, Michigan graduates all dispersing in the real world and then coming together for the funeral of one of their college team uh, ro- roommates and friends, who by the way was played by an unknown actor named Kevin Costner. Yeah, and um, <laughs> they they cut him out of the movie. Um, just a little big chill history Amazing. for you there. Yeah. And, um, so it was a hot school. The today show did like a show where ha- Jane Pauly and, 
And uh, Brian Gumble, one of them was sitting on the campus of Brown and one was sitting in the campus of Michigan. And my mother was impressed by that. Um, so she's like, well, somebody down the street from us in Staten Island was going to Michigan. She goes, well, he's going there. Would you want to go there? So immediately that removed it from my level of interest. And she just said, <laughs> at the one point, my parents were like, just go to this symposium in Manhattan and and see what it's about. And I went there and the the the, the, the students that were there were like normal and spoke to me. And I don't know why, but I'm like, okay, let me go see the school. And I went there and a foot of snow hit the ground and I still fell in love with it. Wow. And it was the greatest decision I ever made. I, I loved going there. It was incredible. I did stand up comedy uh, for four years when I was there. I joined the student newspaper in my sophomore year and worked my way up <clears throat> to covering the Michigan football team in there in Bo wow. Schembechler's last year there, 89, um, and, um, and graduated in 90. But as you know, as you referred to, uh, I, I was um, the sports editor the night of the national championship game that Glenn wow. Rice and the Michigan Wolverines cut down the nets in Seattle. And I drew the short straw for the um, uh, all the sports editors. We drew straws as to who would have to close the newspaper that night. Nobody wanted to do that in case we won and everyone wanted to get drunk and party. Um, I drew the short straw. So I wow. remember everybody's running to the center of campus to celebrate in one direction to go to the center of the campus, because back in the day in the eighties in Michigan, you celebrated by, uh, you know, yanking uh, parking meters out of the ground and throwing them through windows and stuff. Um, so everybody was going to go party and run and celebrate. And I was kind of like a salmon swimming upstream just to get to the, 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 um, the newspaper to close out the coverage of, of winning it all. And that was one of the greatest things. I mean, watching, Ramil Robinson make those free throws and Glenn yeah. Rice raining all those threes, you know, uh, leading to the Fab Five, basically, because if that didn't happen, Steve Fisher would never have gotten the job. He needed to win six in a row yep. in the tournament to keep the job. And he did. That was unbelievable. Amazing. Was. Uh, I, I want to ask. Um, well, I want to give you a moment. To talk about your dad for a second. Um, he passed away a few years ago. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Josh just recently lost his dad a little I'm over so a year sorry, ago. Brother. And thank I you, want, thank you. I want to know as a lifelong educator and school administrator, what mm. lessons from your dad's schools <laughs> or classrooms have had the biggest impact on you over the years? Wow. Year? Um, I didn't see that one coming. Went from Brady to fab to, to Michigan to that. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, I mean, I didn't really learn anything from my father as an educator. Uh, I just learned a lot from my dad about his relationship with my mother, you know, like if I had a say that I took anything away, um, like greatest life lessons from my father, it was just the way that he listened to my mom and was always there for her. Uh, he was really even keel. Like you never knew sometimes whether he was, emotionally reacting to something or not sometimes but if anybody ever disrespected my mother um anybody ever upset her then 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 it was on with him um and he was that way to his dying days and i think his respect for women and his respect for my mom is something that i i had a front row seat for and i carry with me every single day his respect for others and listening to others um, is something I carry with me every single day. Um, you know, and you know, he, he loved Broadway musicals and Judy Garland, you know, so, uh, I didn't get my sports from him at all. None Amazing. of it from my dad, like the rich, if Beautiful. I, if I followed my father's lead, the rich Eisen show would be about the wizard of Oz <laughs> and name, you know, like, the, <laughs> I love that French, I love that, you know, right. I mean, that's the, he was a French teacher. And so, um, I I just got so much from him um and a sense of humor a little bit. Um that that's what I took from my dad. It he had through. to be super, super proud, even <laughs> if it wasn't sports, wasn't it? But to see your yeah. success. What he did would, he think about your success oh gosh, and your field would, of choice? Thank you for asking about that. I mean, uh he he would um you know, he would watch me on Sports Center and he would you'll you'll get a kick out of this, you guys. He would he would call me up afterwards and not talk about what i did or 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 anything like that he would say 
Boy, you talk fast. How do you say Mitch Richmond without, <laughs> you know, tripping over his name? Like, that's what he would say. That's amazing. Like that Mitch Richmond Mitch is the Richmond. name that he, he really So Anytime I, you know, I hear his name, you know, I always think of my dad calling me up oh. saying, how do you say that so easily? That's, you know, and then um, back in the day on Sports Center, there was a trading card, you know, relationship or whatever. And they made these cards uh, with me on it, you know, and it was these these cards, you know, called the what voice of the game or whatever. And there I was and it would have like a little bit of a blurb about not my career and on the other side, my stats or whatever. I don't know. So they gave me thousands of them, uh, way too many than I needed, you know. So I just gave them to my dad and he would um, he oh. would. um Whenever somebody came to the house to fix the cable or, you know, a plumber or anybody who would come to the house, a superintendent or anybody, and they would just walk through the house and they'd look at the photographs on the mantle and see my face. And they go and they and if they recognized me and talked about me, then they were suddenly card worthy. That I'm not saying that that was I'm not saying that that was the, their sole oh, tip or, it. you know, a gratuity for, for their service. But, you know, <laughs> uh, if, if they did a good job and it recognized me, they'd be card worthy and he'd give them a card. That's you know, well, great. That's so. You know, you, you know, Rich, uh, that's funny. Like my mom, if I it's the last scene of a movie and 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 it's on me pushing up close and I get the perfect single teardrop and everything. The end. And I look at my mom and she's always like, who put you in that shirt? <laughs> yeah. Mom, that shirt's terrible on you. It makes you look big. <laughs> now your color. You know, they see different everything. things. Of course, of course they do. And, you know, um, that's the beauty of it. And, and we just try to take from them uh, that love and, and, um, loyalty and respect and and pay it forward you know and that's the, i think why i get along with you two guys you know uh we, we we're from different parts of the country and different upbringings and what have you but you know we were raised you know properly in that way and um you know my mom's still around she's 85 and you know she's she's not as attuned to my day-to-day -day exploits yeah. on tv um but she's 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 proud and it's pretty cool like i i love that your love and humanity shines through thanks pal. your show and obviously it's one of the reasons you have so many listeners and watchers how how do you transition though how did you transition though rich from representing espn and the nfl to representing a show with your name on it was it was it easy no, it no easy look I, I i i'm just thankful that you know that that anybody's interested to what i think or have to say that put a name on it and 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 it, it's just talking about what interests me and thank goodness that interests others you know I, I i don't take it for granted and i try to be normal and i try to be myself i mean another example like somebody tell came up to me the other day because i was at this very microphone um you know, for uh, Monday night football, when DeMar Hamlin mm -hmm. um, dropped to the turf in Cincinnati and somebody said, well, you were on the air for that. So, you man, how did you, you know, fill the time? It must have been an <laughs> awkward thing or whatever. I'm like, first of all, like the fact that you're, you know, and I appreciate you're, you're mm -hmm. asking me about how it affected me, right? you know, right. my professional abilities, like. <laughs> You no, know, no. To me, it's moments like that. You talk about your heart and your gut. Yes. You know, you talk about your heart and your throat. The fact that it looks like Demar Hamlin's heart stopped. Yes. And 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 you're just talking about the way you're feeling, because I think people who are listening or watching respond to that. Certainly, if it matches or resonates with exactly how they're feeling at the moment. And sometimes people just want, you know, they, they they look at at broadcasting or TV or radio or whatever, podcasting clearly, as 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 a, a way to um, um, be reached out to, or you know, and I think to a detriment sometimes in our world, we 
so many people listen to only their point of view right. politically and you want people wind up living in an echo chamber. That's the negative part about it. But the positive part about it is it's sought out to potentially be uh, soothing in a moment of despair or a moment of shock. I saw the other day, Rex, you tweeted out, like, where were you when the space shuttle blew up? I was in seventh right. grade. You were said you were in a civics class. Yep. I was yep. in I was in an um, an auditorium uh, for um, it was a, it was it was a, um, you know, one of those moments where everyone came out of class. It was an assembly assembly. Yeah. Yeah. We were in an assembly in an auditorium all watching. And we wow. were just like, holy shit. Like yeah. what? And so those moments, you, as you point out, you never forget where you were. Right. And if it's one of those moments where you never forget where you were and people are tuning on to television to find out what's going on or listening on the radio, to find out what's going on. then the person at the microphone is somebody who has a, a a a duty to speak from the heart and the gut because i think that that does serve a purpose um you know peter jennings was that for me watching 9 11 coverage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so i know i'm kind of really straying off of your no your that's question perfect. about about you know transitioning to doing a show where i'm talking about you know with my name on it but that's right. the way i approach it every day if i come to work and talk from the heart and the gut, um, you know, with a huge dose of, you know, self-awareness yeah. and, you know, uh, self-effacingness, if that's a word, then, then that's the way I come to work every day and um, just have fun and laugh and cry and whatever. It's like the Jimmy V speech if you yeah. if you laugh, you cry, you touch the grass with your feet, you, you live a full day. And I love shows like that. I just love watching your show, listening Thanks, to your buddy. show because it does. It feels like you've got your your pulse. Uh, it's mm -hmm. right on the heartbeat, heartbeat of the yeah. of, of sport of the sports world. Yeah, and so, I got a touch. I got a touch of the vermil in me, which means I don't mind crying. You know, <laughs> that's good. I, I love mind. it. Yeah. I don't but mind. We uh, uh, we we both have been on your show, yeah. and we commented commented before that it's the best talk show studio uh, of any. It, by far, like I could, I think I said on your show, like I could live there. Yeah. You guys could come Jeff in. Garland once said he <laughs> wanted to, morning. Jeff Garland once said he wanted to actually stay there because I'm right near LAX and he, <laughs> he was on a flight early the next morning. Yeah. I'm like, Jeff, it, I don't think that we could do that. No, it's great. <laughs> no. It's great. Uh, uh, and tell your boys, tell Chris and TJ, yeah, TJ's my guy from way back. I know you tell he knows him, everybody. Tell him. Yeah, he does. He does. He does. You know, but tell, tell those guys hello. Thanks, I will do that. Let's, we uh, love, we loved being on. We talked about being yeah. on the show because you are so relatable, yeah, and thanks, you are Brian. that. And I've watched you my entire adult life speak about sports and these things, and you've done it for hours and hours and hours. You've built up all this trust, and it thanks for us and you. And when Demar Hamlin happens, I want to hear what you yes. say. Right. And that's that's incredible. What's also incredible is you talk all day and you decided to do this podcast. Thank you. Yeah. No, but also well, you guys you talk bad. all day in the time when people are looking to be outraged at something. They want <laughs> yeah. to be just they want to be mad at you. How have you how have you come out of this relatively unscathed when everyone else, you know, just know. every day someone wants to get angry? I don't know, man. Because like I said, I, I'm just who I am and I, I don't you know, I don't try to say anything outrageous. I don't think I do. I, I don't know. I, I, I maybe I'm wrong. Um, but I, I just kind of say what I say. And and again, um, I'm 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 lucky to have a platform. I'm lucky to have a boss in in Roger Goodell, who um, uh, and the rest of the NFL uh, management that knows if I criticize them, um, I'm doing my job. Right. You know, so uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not walking on pins and needles. Thank goodness. Yeah. Um, and um, and so and then I, I do have an, a job at NFL Network as well, where I'm in everyone's home. And I, I guess I have to broadcast in a way like uh, the show I do every day is three hours. The show, Sunday show I do is four. The Super Bowl show I'm about to do next week is eight and a half. Oh, my God. The combine show I'm going to do after that is four days long. The draft show I do after that is three days long. So I need to have a, a quality, I think, in my broadcasting, if you don't mind me saying, that's uh, the the anti-douche 
factor, you know, like I, I, I have sure. to broadcast in a way where you are willing to watch me for a long time because that's how long I'm on, you know? So I, I try nobody to be, can do that. And nobody uh, can yeah. do that. Yeah, I, I, that's hard. It's I try hard. to place myself in the shoes of whoever's listening or watching. And I understand something. Sometimes I might say something might be viewed as critical, but it should never be viewed as personal. It just isn't. Right. 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 Well, well, speaking of that, because people relate to you, are you able to go out and enjoy yourself? Because yeah. they say movie stars, people, you know, are no, scared. it's not like TV, that. I pre- they feel like they're too know kind. You, but you're the guy that it I want to come up and go, hey, uh, let's have a beer. Uh, I like football. Uh, remember, it's Ferragamo. Like, but you must get, <laughs> you must get bombarded with that everywhere you go. And, and you're, you're very kind. I'm sure you're kind, but that's got to be. It's fun. Sometimes. It's great. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm very lucky. Like I said, and I never, I never take it as an issue with anybody. You know, if somebody wants to say hello, I'm, like I said, I'm fortunate to do that. Fantastic. Honestly. And you're kind to put me in that world. I'm, I, I've never, oh, there's my dog. I've never, <laughs> I've, I, like Berman, uh, I've never walked through uh, an airport. Berman and Deion Sanders are the two most famous people I've ever walked through an airport with. So, and I'm not in that. I'm not in that in that range. Hey, uh, we, we we've got to talk about the Super Bowl real fast. They must sure. not be that famous because they were in an airport. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I uh, yeah. said they're, they're they're the two most famous people I'd never walk through an FBO in. Correct. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, uh, this Super Bowl, Rich. Who you got? Is it too? Uh, early? I don't know. I mean, I, all I, the storylines. Hey, the, man, I amazing. know. I know this is going to sound like a cop out, but certain Super Bowls you just don't know. And this cop is out. Cop no, I know. Out. I know it. I know it. Um, you know, and it, 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 I think it's going to be similar to what we saw in the AFC Championship game, which is two high level um, teams playing incredibly well. Mistakes will be made because both defenses can can force it. And who's going to get the ball last and which team will make the mistakes to allow the other team to have the ball last is going to is going to be it. Uh, I really believe it. Um, that's the way the AFC championship came game came down to uh, the NF. I'm not taking the 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 narrative that the Eagles haven't played anybody because the Chiefs have played more um, playoff teams. The Chiefs played seven playoff teams and had to go through um uh, a young and up and coming Trevor Lawrence and then Joe Burrow mm. playing at his assassin type level. And <laughs> the Eagles went through Daniel Jones um, and then whatever the Niners put there on the field, obviously uh, a shadow of what one one would think would be a, a, a level of an, a championship weekend quarterback. I'm not buying that. Yeah. There's a reason why Brock Purdy got hurt. It's because the Eagles punked the, the Niners in the trenches Mm-hmm. Um, so, and they can do that to the chiefs as well. Um, obviously I love the factor that we see brothers playing against each other. We see the city of brotherly love against the coach that, that made his bones there yep. now in Kansas city hurts is an incredible story, mm-hmm. uh, against Mahomes. um, two one seeds playing each other. The last time we saw that in the super bowl is when the Eagles beat new England. Wow. Um, and won their last one. So I really believe it's going to be. And then, of course, you know, if if Kelsey wakes up with back spasms that weekend or Mahomes' ankle gets stepped on in the first quarter, then everything changes. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't know. All I know is I'm looking forward to it tremendously. We're so lucky to have all these unbelievable young quarterbacks in the yeah. right now. Who do you think the best quarterback in the game is right now? It's Mahomes. Okay. Well, let me, a- let me ask you this. Yeah. On Mahomes' You you have to win one game to yes. save your life, okay? Yeah. Mahomes on his best day to win one game, or Brady on his best day to win. Oh one God, game. it's Tom Brady. I mean, okay. he did it? Okay. He did it. I mean, okay. Mahomes was hurt in that Super Bowl. I understand, but I mean, Brady did it against yeah. Mahomes. Like he did it, and Burrow is the second coming of Brady. You know, yeah. in terms of in terms of the way they play and hold themselves and comport themselves and cool Mental under pressure. Makeup, yes. Um Burrow Burrow Burrow's Burrow is better than Brady than Brady was at Burrow's age. That's wow. a fact. Wow. I and you call the way you said assassin, and that's the perfect he is. Yeah. He's a baby face assassin. I actually because yeah. I think this this pop culture reference I think is right up your alley. We're all the same age. Uh if you remember Finster Baby from uh from um uh, Looney Tunes, the the, the, <laughs> the uh, 
a thug who dressed himself yeah, up as a yeah, baby yeah. to avoid, yeah. uh, avoid capture yeah. with his cigar in his mouth. Yeah, yeah, I put yeah. a split screen of Burrow with a cigar in his mouth next to Finster Baby. <laughs> he is that. He's a baby faced assassin. That's what uh, he is. He love is it. that. He's I love he it. is that. Oh, yeah. Hey, okay. So we normally end with two questions. What's your favorite movie and who would you see front row center if you could do that? Can you answer those real fast? Yes. Uh, my favorite movie of all time is The Sting. And what's your other question? And uh, front row center, anyone, anytime, dead or alive, who would it be to to watch speak or concert or anything? Oh, wow. Man, I think it would have to be Sinatra. Man, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That's the first Sinatra we've gotten. In Vegas. Yeah, it is. Love it. In Vegas. In Vegas. In Vegas. In, in Vegas. In, in Vegas, 1960s Sinatra in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's what oh. it would be. Fantastic. That's okay. Great. Okay. So I wanted to get to this and I want you to figure out who asked me to tell you this or, or ask you this. I need to know what do the words he got it mean to you and what's the origin story there? Okay. So <laughs> here it is. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm resting this thing on top of a printer and I think my it's wife okay. just came home and is printing. <laughs> <laughs> see what it is get off the computer i what swear it it's a printer i don't know what's going on it's a printer uh my, got my a draft. son all right <laughs> draft so, notice just came in. so here's the drill um real quick um so i'm in uh grad school at the um in northwestern university and um the last quarter of that grad school is in the washington dc area and i'm 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 trying to you know get my degree and then wind up on TV somewhere and follow my dream. And I'm so lucky to have that actually have happened. So I'm living uh, with a bunch of my uh, Michigan uh, fraternity brothers who are based in the mid Atlantic area because the, as again, the final quarter of the Northwestern middle school of journalism program is in Washington, DC. So for three months, I'm crashing in their house um, as a student. And uh, I believe Wayne Gretzky was going for either the all-time points mark of Gordie Howe or goal scored or something. I forget. And my buddy fraternity brother's name is David Satlin. Um, and his nickname was Money. Um, he's dead asleep on the couch, like snoring to the point where we can't hear the broadcast over his snoring. Uh, Gretzky shoots, he scores, he wakes up and we're all celebrating. And he looks at the screen and he sees that the record has been set. He goes, oh, he got it and rolled back over and went back to sleep. So for the rest of the term, we would use that phrase uh, in the house, you know, like, you you know, are you picking up the food? I got it. You know, are you going to take out the trash? I got it. He got it. You know, he like that it. to bust his balls the whole time. <laughs> and I said, like, I'm here because I'm trying to get on TV as a sportscaster. If I ever reach my goal, I will make that a catchphrase. And sure enough, I got to Sports Center, and anytime anybody ever hit a home run, I'm like, "He got it!" Like that was it. <laughs> That's beautiful. And That's even to this day, beautiful. when I'm doing highlights or calling a game on NFL Network, I'm calling a game. I called a Munich game, and you know Brady and and Seattle, and two other games. Anybody makes a field goal, I go. He once a game, I'll go. He got he it. He got it. I'll yeah. be on the lookout for it. I'll be on. That's also it. the Munich game. Interesting. Yeah, that was the amazing. Munich, the Unreal. 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 The Munich. The Munich. Munich. Oh, Munich. Munich. <laughs> they all had high voices. Yeah, no, yeah. It was not uh, Game of Thrones, brother. No, it was Germany. Uh, Rich Omaha. Eisen. Omaha. <laughs> Rich Eisen, thank you, buddy. Anytime, brother. Good Come back, do it guys. again. Enjoy your next couple of weeks, bud. Be safe. You got it. The best, Josh. The best. Richard Seth Eisen. How about no, that? No, we've been on his show and now, now he's, he's been, been on, on ours. ours. Yeah. 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 What a great guest. Like I was saying earlier, it's like, oh, he, you know, he talks for a living. So he's amazing. You just ask yeah. him anything. And he's like, oh, sure. I remember back in 1968 when the record was set. It was set in the first half, by the way, by Bill Fliffner Flam, whose mom was a teacher at uh, Transylvania University in Lexington, Kentucky, actually. So that's interesting. Like, you're like, what? He can just he's tie everything together. It's just yeah. amazing. The listeners won't know, but his computer cut out halfway, midway through this interview. And uh, we were just like, all right, well, he'll he'll log back on here and pick up right where he left off. And guess what happened? That's what happened. He's right? a pro's pro. He's pro's a pro. pro. And it's true. You just want to, it's a guy you want to have a beer with. You, you know, that you want to hear his take on important things because he's, he's a, a guy. 
No question. He's smart and, and, and he's got a smart, he's been around, he's knowledgeable about the sport, but just humanity. He's, he, he's intelligent emotionally. So he's a guy you turn to when, when someone has a heart attack on the field, you want to no hear question. his take. No question. You know, it, it, and this is his busy time, his busy, busy, busy time. And me, the asshole I am, I text him up a few days ago. And I'm like, hey, you want to come on the podcast? And guess what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I do. Anything for you guys. What, what a great guy. What a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's do it again next time, bud. You want to? I do. I do. I really do. Well, join us back here next week, you guys, for the Rex Chapman Show with super dope Josh Hopkins, powered by basketballnews.com. <laughs>